All right, let's talk about animation, finally. So here I'm going to start with a new flipbook, and I'm going to do like a little bouncing ball. Now, if I type plus, I kind of need to see the one that came before. Animators use something called onion skin for that. That's what this icon does. It shows you sort of a translucent representation of the frame that came before. So you can sort of tell where you need to draw each new frame. Now animations in inchworm loop. So when you get back to where you want to meet with your first frame, you can see the previous and the next frame together. So here I'm on the last frame, so I'm seeing the, seeing the previous one. Because I'm on the last frame, I'm also seeing an onion skin back to the first frame. And that makes it real easy to draw one in between to make the whole loop really smooth. If I turn the onion skin off, I can see it, how it will be. If you hit the A button, that plays it automatically, so you don't have to hold down on the D-pad. Now what I'm going to do is use layers to fill this in with color. What I'm going to do is make a new layer, slide it underneath my first one, and now I'm going to use the polygon tool to color that in. And that's nice because you can color it in without worrying about messing up the lines that you've already drawn. So if I make a mistake, I can hit the X button, and that will erase only the current layer that you have. I'm being kind of sloppy about it, but get the idea. And I can go through if I want and make a sort of a half translucent shadow. You get the idea. All right. One other thing that Inchworm has is animation timing. Sort of an advanced way of looking at uh, short animations is that most mo usually when you play, when you make animation, all the frames run at the same speed. You have like 10 frames a second, 4 frames a second. That's however many frames you see within one time period. Well, there's a way of doing animation where each frame has its own timing, and you can make more sophisticated animations that way with less frames. That's what this little bar across the top here is. You're changing the timing of each frame. So say we want our animation here to pause at the end. So if, like as it gets here, we want it to hold a little longer. So we can set this sort of timing bar to 3, go over it on the other end, set that to 3, and say the other one's like, we'll set this one to 2, set these 3 to 1, set this one to 2. So now we've got sort of a variation in timing, and when you run it, you can create some sort of extra, you know, sort of feeling to the animation just by changing the length of time that each frame is displayed. Okay.